This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Nikon just released a new firmware update, which includes eye autofocus for the Z6 and Z7. And in this video, I'm gonna be putting it through its paces during golden hour and my thoughts from a Sony user's perspective. So I am about 15, about 15 feet from her. I'm gonna see if it still works. Here we go. Ready, one, two, look straight at me. So I think this is about, yeah, 15 feet. Eye autofocus doesn't pick up, but it still has facial tracking. And I think that should be good enough anyways. One, two, three, I'm gonna get a little closer. Let's see, and yeah, now eye autofocus works. One, two, good. Right now, the sun is coming directly into the lens. We're gonna see if the eye autofocus uh, works even, because this is actually really challenging for a lens to focus in, period. So let's see if eye autofocus works. Bugs yeah, be careful with the bugs. Okay, here we go. One. So the great thing about this eye autofocus is that I'm able to switch the eye. So babe, look straight at me. See, a little arrow pops up next to the box and I can move it left to right, which is pretty cool. So like, turn your, turn your head a little bit this way, a little bit more, this way, right there. And I could actually switch the eye to the closest one to the, to the camera. Let's see, one, two, three, good. Oh yeah, cool, that is awesome. Uh, that, that is exactly how mama walks. <laughs> that is not how I walk. Yeah, it is. Adriana, don't. Skip your booty. <laughs> Who walks like that? You. No, I don't. Yes, and walk toward me. And stop right there. Good. Okay, walk toward me now. Good. Before I get into the results that I got with the Nikon, check out Jared Pollan's video, Frono's Photo. He did a really good comparison between the Nikon, Canon, and the Sony, super detailed. Make sure to click it, but after this video. You don't, don't click off now. I don't wanna give him that big of a plug now. So watch it after, okay? The Nikon worked really well with still subjects. When my wife was not moving, it hit almost 100%. When I got closer to her, I noticed that sometimes it would focus either on, like it would slightly front focus, like on her eyelid over here. And then sometimes it was slightly back focus, but her eye was still decently sharp. It wasn't like completely blurred, definitely usable. Something that you see only when you pixel people. But I was actually blown away at how good the eye autofocus was with still subjects. This is their first time with uh, uh, using this kind of feature you know sony's been doing it for a couple of years now they've basically perfected it's so good um, but nikon does have something that sony doesn't have and that's the ability to change eyes so when both eyes are in focus or when both eyes are basically in in the frame and then the camera can see both eyes you're able to change the eyes with the d-pad you can switch from you know which eye and what's funny is that with Sony, sometimes, sometimes it'll focus on the back eye. Let's say your model's turning their face and their back eye, it, it goes to this one. And you know how an old television, you just start smacking the back of the old television to get it to work. Well, sometimes with the Sony, I go, mm, I just shake it to try to like get it to this eye. And with Nikon, you can actually select it. And that's so cool because you know, you want, you always want that front 
eye to always be in focus no matter what. So that's a great feature. Now, the bad. So my wife was walking toward me and then started to walk away. That's when you started to see the inconsistencies of the IAF. I got four out of 10 shots during that sequence. I did other ones that I didn't record and I got about the same kind of thing, like half the shots. So yeah, it's not great. Also keep in mind that I was using an adapted lens with a really wide aperture. So, I mean, the, the, I mean, the amount that's in focus already is so small. So, you know, I guess I gotta give a little bit of break. You know, this is a 1.4, 105 millimeter. Maybe I should have shot it with a 2470. Maybe it would have been a better result. But um, when you're using a portrait lens like the 105 wide open, you're not gonna get great results when your model is moving towards you or just moving in general. One thing I definitely want, I, I need to mention in this video, you guys know I've been praising this camera. I really like using it, but the AF altogether is still very glitchy. The subject can be right in front of you, smacking you. While smacking you, you can try to take a picture of them and it'll still focus on the background. My son, I handed this camera to my son. He was taking pictures of us as we were walking. He was just toying with the camera, playing with it. And he even said like, Manny, like the AF, like the autofocus is not good. Sometimes it won't even focus on you right in front of me walking. And I'm like, yeah, that's something that I definitely noticed. So and with Sony, the autofocus is very predictable. It's very good. IAF sometimes can be glitchy as well, but for the most part, it worked really good, even in backlit situations. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using this camera more. I got a long-term review unit right here, and I love the fact that I can record the EVF. I can record the viewfinder while still using the electronic viewfinder. With the Sony, I need to put an external monitor, and then I got a compose and do everything from the monitor. I can't look inside the EVF, it's disabled. That That's what kills me. So I am gonna be using this camera more. Subscribe if you wanna see more Nikon videos cause they're coming, all right? Before I go, I'm gonna send a shout out to my sponsor for this video, Skillshare. So six years ago when I started to learn photography, I learned everything I know off the internet. The problem was that on the internet, there's just sporadic amounts of information everywhere. You know, you're getting things from all kinds of directions. And Skillshare is an online database with thousands of different courses and they're all very just optimized for you to learn they're very concentrated on whatever subject it is and there are subjects for everything let me tell you so if you want to learn photography you can learn photography you want to learn how to use the editing software that you just got you can learn that as well so recently i started to dabble in final cut pro because i'm thinking about switching to it i took a final cut course on skillshare and now i'm like i'm already editing in it you know so um, definitely check out Skillshare if you need just help in your creative process, you wanna get inspired, you wanna learn something new, trust me, check it out. A link will be down below. The first 500 people to click it will get two months free. So make sure to check that link out. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Awkward.